Okay, so I have a little bit of time to tinker today and I am messing with the Nikon Z5 at 4K with a crazy crop and a Deity shotgun mic. Have I changed my mind about shotgun mics? And I think the answer is no, not necessarily, but I do like this shotgun mic. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm on the Z5 running 4K with the crazy crop on a wide angle lens. This is a Tamron 17 to 35 f2.8 to 4. I realized something. Even with the crazy crop on a wide angle, you still get a pretty good field of view. I'm actually not at the widest right now. I'll give you an example. This is the widest. Okay, this is, a, this is the widest angle view. I wanted to do 4K. I wanted to do it on the desktop. Something simple. I didn't want to screw with... Um, you know, a vlog style. I don't really do that, so this is kind of more my, my cup of tea as far as talking to the camera. I'm using that Deity mic, shotgun mic. I want to see how it works. I still think wireless is the way to go, especially for aftermarket lenses, but we'll talk. Now, I am, my chin is 32 inches away from the base of the camera, which means it's about 30 inches away from the FTZ adapter. So with my arm, at a decent bend, because it's wide angle, at a decent bend, you're looking at roughly an eight inch type of scenario for whatever you're gonna use to carry it around with, whether it's a tripod or whatnot, and you would get this field of view. Out of the way? Okay. Wanted to talk about something real quick today. Um, this is, once again, to test I just like doing tests and tabletop style vlogging. Um, I only got a few minutes. I only get to do this on my breaks and lunch hours and so on and so forth. So, um, especially obviously here at the office. So, I wanted to talk about the rumors that have been popping out about the Nikon Z6S and the Z7S. Now, I'm going to focus on the Z6S, but I'm going to focus on um, a few interesting points. One is they keep talking about dual processors, which Dual processors are a big deal when it comes to computers and it comes to processing power and, and threads, which means it can run more algorithms, it can run multiple things at the same time. Why is that important in a camera? Well, one is you can do things like record to two video cards if you're doing video. You can also do more computations when it comes to focus while you're shooting live. So. Uh, Sony's doing really good at this, but like a no blackout while you're doing audio um, auto continue focus, right? I detect. The other thing I found interesting is, and I'm starting to really appreciate with the Z5, is this new battery, the ENEL15C. Now, the Nikon Z6 and Z7 can use this battery, but the Z5 is the only one that will allow you to charge the battery while using it. That doesn't mean continuous power. The battery will go down a little bit because the charging ability, to my understanding, isn't enough juice to keep the power going. Like It doesn't supply enough power for the camera itself, but it will drain the battery at a lot slower of a rate, right? Um, and to verify that, I, Ricky talks. He has a Nikon. He does mainly Nikon stuff. He does gear and all that, but uh, go to his channel. He actually has a really good video on it. Okay, so we talked about the battery a little bit, and I, I'm, I fully guarantee that they're going to put that charging capability into the Z, into the Z6s. Now, some of the reports are saying it's going to use the same sensor. I'm actually okay with that, since it's really just been about two years from the release of the of the Z6, roughly. That sensor is still pretty good. And Nikon needs to focus on their autofocus system and the, how fast it can focus um, and what the camera can do quickly, buffer speeds and stuff like that. Now, the buffer speeds are, are, are great on, on the Nikons for this season. They're good. They're not amazing. They're good. So, let me slow this down for a second. So, what am I saying? I'm okay with the Z6 and Z7 sensors. Now, I have a feeling that the Z7 might get a bump because everybody else is coming out with with 60 mega, uh, megapixel sensors. 
but if they don't come out with that, I don't think anybody's going to be mad at having a 46 megapixel, megapixel, a megapixel sensor and a 24 megapixel sensor. Because what they really need are, or what they really want are some of the features that you just don't quite have with the Nikon system yet. Or things that they can improve on. Autofocus has come a long way. I'm really starting to enjoy the autofocus on these Nikons. They're getting better and better. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, is it going to detect a eyeball on a small dog? I Very specifically, I have a mini schnauzer and she's the funnest dog ever because she's just super cool. Her name's Belle. And she's a black dog with like black hair with really dark eyes and it doesn't pick up her eyeball. Okay, I, I'm fine with that. So, I mean, there's things that they can that they can figure out and work on and other animal AF and I get that. But, you know, honestly, at that high end of a camera, most photographers are gonna, are gonna nail focus as long as the system is good enough to focus where they tell it to anyways. I actually wanna talk about the video just for a split second because they're talking about 4K at 60p. That's where that processor is going to help out. Now at 4K 60p, I'm thinking it's going to be a 420, and then they're going to do like a ProRes RAW type of thing, a 422 going out. Um, we might even see, because there's another rumor on another site, they tout very specifically that, that Nikon is saying, and I don't know where they're getting their information, but the, the Nikon is rumoring, right? So we have to, all these rumors... They're not rumors, Nikon's feeding stuff out because they're trying to get hype for these cameras. If you think there are true rumors that somebody's got an inside scoop on this stuff and that nobody's gonna know about it, this is just pre-marketing material is what it is. And they wanna see what sticks, right? But there are more new video features. Well, what can they do? They can have a higher output RAW, which would be pretty tough. They can have maybe an, an 8K output as opposed to internal 8K. Um, they might do it, or a 6K or something of that variant. I have a hard time with 4K, to be honest with you. So, I mean, you're really going to a niche crowd there, in my opinion. What I would love to see, and I know this is completely lame, and I know a lot of people are gonna, but a flip screen. Even a lot of photographers are starting to say, you know, those Canon flip screens, with the twist and swivel are great for photography because at certain angles you can look at the monitor no matter what you're doing. Okay, so if they come out with, if they don't give a flip screen, figure, Nikon, please figure out some kind of monitoring system that is bolt on, works with the hot shoe, gets power from the dang um, camera or something or powers from the USB cable, something that I'm not running around and bolting on all this crap. I don't want it. I don't want a Ninja 5. I don't want an external monitor. I don't want to have to deal with all this crap. But if I do, I'd much rather have it from Nikon. I want it to be refined and I want it to have something better than just buying a third party. What would be better? Using a hot shoe mount with data ports. That would be awesome. Right? No external wiring, no external cabling. I think I can handle that. Uh, an internal battery that, that, will, that you need to charge but will get continuous power from the camera somehow. With these new batteries, I think it's possible. Um, recording to dual cards. Some people want that. It doesn't bother me either way. But something to help the screen situation. I'm using this little reflector right now. It works okay, but it's small. It's really designed compact. Like I'm, I'm almost gonna see, I, I've said this before, but I'm gonna talk to a buddy of mine that, that has a CNC. I'm gonna see if he can cut me out on an aluminum one that's bigger to fit the whole screen so I can actually see what's going on. So those are my thoughts on the, on the Z6S. That's kind of like the, the rumors that are going around. The EVF's fine. They're talking about adding more pixels to the EVF. Okay, cool. Um, the, the two processors, I think, will give them the ability to write in software updates. And those software updates will actually enhance the camera. That's what they did with the Z6, right? They've come a long ways. But if they start doing more forward thinking like this, the next thing I'd like to see from Nikon or somebody 
Start with a base camera with a great processor and a great sensor. Start at a lower price and everything I want to do, it might be a software unlock. Let's say I can buy the body for $1,100 because that's what the hardware really costs or $1,200, but I want 60p 4K and I spend $40 on a licensing key or 60 bucks or $200, whatever you think the pricing could be. And then it's kind of like more like a PC. You buy a PC and then you buy software to do the specialty things that you want to do with it. I can really see this being a thing. Anyways, they're not going to do that. That's not what the dual processors are for, but that would be kind of cool. So, um, as usual, if you have any questions or comments, put them down there. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Let me know how this looks. Let me know how the mic sounds. I'm curious. I'm still not sold on shotgun mics. Let me know if the, the 1.7 crop was really that big of a deal. This was done in a 1.7 crop, man. Now I'm at the widest angle. I actually don't enjoy that. I would, I, I would actually assume to be closer in. This, this would probably be where I would feel more comfortable with my shot being anyways, but I wanted to give you an idea of what a 17 would look like. I gave you the measurements how far I was away from the camera. I think that 1.7 crop, I mean, people gave, gave Canon a hard time about it and they're giving Nikon a hard time about it. Do you need to have it? No, but at the same time, it doesn't bother me all that much, especially with the wide angle lens. Yes, you're gonna have to swap out lenses and I get that you're not gonna get the same field of view as your photos. So I get it, I get it. So if you're a travel photographer and videographer, I can see where that can be kind of a problem. But for tabletop stuff, with a full frame that handles light fairly well, it's not as good as the Z6. I put this low light in between the Z50 and the Z6, to be honest with you. Or just just under the, the um, just under the Z6 and the D780. The, D7, the D780 has really good low light, but I like the focusing engine on these mirrorless better. My, my D780, it, it has a little bit of shift all the time. This one doesn't seem to shift back and forth as much. There's something about the DSLR system that still has that, that peck and hunt system to where even if you're in focus, it's gonna refocus again anyways. Kind of drives me nuts a little bit. This one seems to be a little bit, little, little bit more stable. So anyways, put your comments down. Let me know what you think. Let me know, you, let me know what you think about the mic. Um, thumbs up if you like the content subscribe links down in the description for the stuff I use and for for you know the camera equipment and everything that I that I've used in the past or that I review and as usual have an amazing day